so I'm excited to say that my friends at Sam Ash sent me a free guitar. And they said, Benny, let us know what you think. So today, we get to learn who Michael Kelly is. The amount of restraint that I've used to not open this package. And I'm so excited that you guys like me. You really like me. I just hit 20,000 subscribers. I am at a loss for words. You guys are just the greatest. I can't tell you how much I've appreciated everyone taking the time to come watch this channel and how much I appreciate my friendship with Sam Ash. In fact, Sammy Ash, cheers to the heavens, was a friend of mine, after he passed, I reached out to his son, Ben, because when he was here on this planet, he wanted Ben and I and him to go hang out together. And he was like, you gotta meet my son, Ben. You guys are so much alike. First off, Ben's unite. But let me tell you something about Ben Ash. I talked to this dude on the phone. We definitely are a lot the same guy. He's like going to awesome concerts. We love bad 80s movies, 90s stuff. We got a lot in common. But something that Ben Ash immediately understood that's important to me. He said, Benny, would you be interested in, you know, maybe talking about some of our guitars? Me? You want me? Like, what do you mean? We'll send you some guitars and, you know, let us know what you think. As a girl from the big city, all I've ever wanted was to be told I'm pretty. That's only surface level, right? Like actions speak louder than words. And by the way, Ben messaged me and said, I will let you know when there's a UPS tracking number. Never did that. So yesterday I'm on the couch with the lady and the FedEx truck pulls up and she's like, what did you order this time? I'm like, I didn't order anything. And I see the guy come out with what's clearly a guitar box and my heart starts fluttering. Oh God. And then the box said Sam Ash right all over it with the tape. I had to open that box because I couldn't resist at least opening one box. This was the, the interior box, which I've saved for us. But I got that box and I knew that I had made it. You want to know how to make me feel special? That you get me is to do what Ben Ashton on behalf of Sam Ash, which is send me a free guitar. One of the other things that Ben did that made things exponentially harder for me is he actually gave me a choice. Free will is just an illusion, right? But Ben gave me the illusion that I had a choice. He said, any chance is a trial run video to show the team you'd be willing to do a video on Michael Kelly guitar? I know you typically do vintage higher end gear, but I'd be curious of your take on one of these. If so, check through the site and pick your favorite and we'll send you one, assuming we have it in stock. Also, if you want to give it away, even better. First off, I do higher end guitar stuff and all of that because that's what I collect and that's what I've loved. I'm bougie. I am certainly not of the ilk that because it's expensive or because it's rare, because it's more opulent, that it makes anything any better. And when I've done reviews on this channel of more entry level guitars or budget level guitars, I always get tons of comments from people saying, I bought this because of you. I truly love this instrument. Thank you for sharing something that I can actually afford or find somewhere. So I'm excited to be able to have something that if you guys dig it, you can go right to samash.com and order one. They're available. It's not like, hey man, check out this 1930 Epiphone Seville. Oh, you want one? Can't, there's like five of them. I'll admit I didn't know anything about Michael Kelly guitars other than I've just seen them in my feed and they always look beautiful and I'm kind of like, what's the deal with that? And they seem very inexpensive for what I'm looking at. So I'm always interested to know more about these companies. I was very curious to really understand like what the heck is this company all about and who is Michael Kelly? I pull up these guitars, the Mod Shop 55 Ebony Custom Fralin. Okay, this is clearly a play on the Telecaster and look at that top. Holy crap, that's wicked nice, as we say in Boston. It's wicked pissa! It's $11.99, that seems super cheap for an ebony top guitar. That's a beautiful looking guitar, but not really a telly guy. Next, Mod Shop Patriot Instinct Duncan. Oh, wow. How many times have I said that I love guitars that look like they should be from the beach, whether it's the ocean, whether it's the sand. Look at the finish on this thing. Blue fade on this quilt top. Now this immediately made me realize why I have always questioned these guitars because sub $900 for a guitar that looks like this with that kind of top, what's up with it? I love this one. I love it. But you know, gotta see what else they got. The Mod Shop Patriot Instinct Bare Knuckle. Now this thing is sick looking. But of course, I immediately see it in partial eclipse, which is a really cool color. That blue fade, which I feel like it should have like a fancy name, like the Atlantic Ocean blue fade. 
looks to be like the same instrument except bare knuckle pickups. This one comes with the mule set, some of the best sounding pickups I've ever heard to be honest with you, but I already have some in my Les Pauls over here. The hybrid special allows you quickly to switch from powerful electric guitar tones to big acoustic guitar sounds with the flip of a switch. Thin and lightweight, the chambered semi hollow body provides acoustic resonance while producing a sweet clear tone. Two custom voice Rockfield SWC humbucker pickups with coil splitting allow the guitar to deliver everything from super clean twang tones to thick drippy drive sounds. A Fishman under saddle pickup with Fishman power Power chip delivers a rich acoustic tone. The electric and acoustic signals are combined when using a standard guitar cable or separated via Y cable to deliver isolated guitar signals to electric or acoustic amplifiers for maximum sonic impact. Wow, that sounds like a really useful guitar. I'm not really doing anything live or acoustic stuff, but I'm interested to hear about the hybrid because that's kind of a cool guitar and for the price, it's pretty wild assuming it's any good. I have been dying to open this thing and check out my Mod Shop Patriot with the Seymour Duncans. I noticed that there is a Sam Ash envelope in here with some fancy looking paper. All guitars of distinction from Sam Ash come with a certificate of inspection. It looks like they've gone through this whole thing and whoever this dude is, I can personally get angry at him if this sucks. And if it's awesome, dude, write your name out in a way I can read it so I can send you some freaking cookies. Better be in tune, Sam Ash! Now for the big reveal. I haven't even seen this yet. Tell me, you tell me. Is this thing any good? Oh, I can see this in my screen, guys. Whoa, look at that. It looks like the ocean. And only three knobs, so I'm hoping those are two volumes and a tone, because who needs two tones? Those Seymour Duncans are wild looking. I'm excited because if you didn't notice, they have these mini toggles. These are apparently the Instinct inlays, which by the way, says genuine mother of pearl. This is not mother of pearl, it's mother of toilet seat, but that's abalone. I love my mollusk. And then you have this dude, Michael Kelly's name up here. And we're gonna get into who Michael Kelly actually is. Look at this neck joint. No tomfoolery here. This is made for speed and shred. This is so nice looking. It's light. I'm gonna say that this is like barely eight pounds, like maybe eight. Did the dude at Sam Ash do his job? Drum roll, please. <laughs> And I'm gonna say right from the jump, I like how this guitar sounds acoustically. You get an A+. I am completely impressed with how this guitar looks. This abalone strip down here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six ply binding, binding on the neck, on the headstock. The finish on this thing is great. I know for a fact that they use four to six millimeter veneers. This is a solid mahogany tone machine with basically a very small maple cap on it. Doesn't really matter to me because it looks awesome. And if it sounds awesome, who freaking cares? And at this price, I mean, come on now. You got Grover tuners on this. So that's another thing I noticed with a lot of cheap overseas instruments. When you turn these knobs, it's either super hard or super fast. Like you, you, know, you don't have that nice roll. This has a real nice feel to it. I wanted to find out a little bit about Michael Kelly, the guitar company, and who on earth is Michael Kelly? So if you go to michaelkellyguitars.com, the focus has always been to start with sound and top it off with a bold boutique inspired appearance. When Michael Kelly launched, we, in fact, only offered mandolins and acoustic basses. These two markets had been underserved and consumers could not buy a great sounding instrument without breaking the bank. The Michael Kelly Dragonfly collection of both acoustic basses and mandolins quickly became popular and hard to get. Musicians were drawn to their decidedly custom appearance and then fell in love with their sound and performance. By 2001, Michael Kelly Guitars added its first acoustic guitar and electric guitars. These acoustics have evolved and are now sold around the world. To this day, Michael Kelly remains focused on our vision statement to be built on sound, and each time we put the cherry on top by giving the musician a bold look. We are proud that we do not offer the cookie cutter boring guitars that are readily available from so many brands. We know that there are players that prefer classic simplicity, and we very much respect that. However, Michael Kelly will continue to be the brand of choice for those that prefer something more boutique and unique. So basically what I gather from that is they make really beautiful guitars for a great price and that they're not really interested in not making something look crazy and opulent. And if you look at this, you got a beautiful quilt maple top, a Palo Ferro fretboard. These Duncans look 
sweet. This is certainly a guitar that other guitarists see in the other band that go, oh, what's that dude playing? So as I go to meet the team, I found out about this Tracy Heft guy. Tracy started MK in 1999. The aesthetic value, sonic diversity, overall performance of the Michael Kelly line reflects his drive. He keeps us striving to be more boutique while remaining within the reach of every player. And then, the main guy is Steve Pisani, idea man, head honcho. Steve has over 30 years of experience in both the guitar retail and manufacturing industries. An accomplished guitarist himself, he oversees all daily operations and future big picture projects for Michael Kelly. So when I first Googled the company, a lot of what I got is that this Tracy guy was importing guitars and putting pickups and customizing them in the US, but they were being made over in Korea and Indonesia. Like any of my episodes, I like to really research what I'm talking about. And when I saw Steve Pisani, I wanted to go down the rabbit hole and Google this guy. There's not a lot about it on this website, but if you dig in, this guy is like gangster for the music industry. Like he's been around for a long time. As I'm researching Steve, I decide I'll find him on Facebook. I'll send him a message. Maybe he'll come talk to me. Check this message out. Steve, I'm shooting a video on Michael Kelly guitars for Sam Ash. They sent me a Patriot with the Seymour Duncans in it. Would you have a moment to speak? That's at 10.45 a.m. What is your phone number? I can call you now. I am free. At 11.02 a.m. So basically it took Steve 17 minutes to get back to me to help me with this episode for you guys so I could better understand who Michael Kelly is. When you go to michaelkellyguitars.com, it says Michael Kelly. And if you look, got no face. And ironically, the company says we are not a faceless company, except that Michael Kelly doesn't have a face. And the reason being is he's an inspirational leader. Who is Michael Kelly? He is the spirit that underpins all of our products and our commitment to delivering boutique worthy products at a price that is within reach. He is the players around the world that have discovered MK instruments and play them enthusiastically. No, there is no actual guy named Michael Kelly involved. He is so much more. Oh, I hate this. Before I talked to Steve, I was confused. I didn't know what to think. I'm like, Michael Kelly isn't a person? How'd they even come up with the name? Does this guy know a Michael Kelly? Like, who's Michael Kelly? I have two solid pages of notes from talking to Steve. Can I please have more time with this guy? Can you, can you call me every day? Because I just like listening to you talk, man. Steve is rad. Steve got started on West 48th Street in New York City in the 80s, even the 70s, 60s. West 48th Street was the place for music. All the music shops were lined up and down the street and all the rock stars from that time period used to go down there. And that before the internet, this was the place. This is where you went to find anything music equipment related or just to know what was going on in the scene. But this guy was in a band back in the late 70s, early 80s, and he was going to school at one of the gigs Someone smashes him in the face with a Marshall 412 cap. Not fun. Mess his whole face up. So now he's too embarrassed to go to school. And his mom says, you're going to go down to 48th Street. And you're going to learn about music. Talk about a cool Italian mother first off. You're going to go down and you're going to learn about the rock and roll, Stevie. All right. He went down to Alex's and Alex was this Italian guy and he goes, sell me this pen. And of course, Steve was like, oh, Van Halen owned this pen. This is the coolest pen. He goes, write out your name, Steve Pisani. Oh, you're Italian, you hide it. And then Steve became a staple. All the rockers went through Steve. Eventually, Alex has actually got bought out by Sam Ash. Next thing you know, he's the best salesperson for the entire company for 30 years. I felt like rejuvenated and better about myself and talking to him. So I can understand how he's like the great salesperson of all time because I just want to call him back and find out more about him. When I see that blank face on Michael Kelly, that should be Steve Pisani. Steve, change your name to Michael Kelly. I want a face to this name. I want to know it's the guy with the long hair since 1970 something that's rocking out until he can't make the freaking devil horns anymore. Everyone loves him because one of the things he said to me, because I don't want to just make a sale. I want to make a friend. You know what my name means in, in English from Italian, Benny? Of course, being the Greek Russian Jew, I, I have no idea. He goes, it's Paisan. It's, uh, it means friend. Uh, we're friends now. And I got to tell you, I'm glad I'm friends with Steve. After his whole stint with Sam Ash, he gets offered a chance to become the president of D'Angelico Guitars. Apparently in 2017, the Ash company said, hey, listen, we're looking at these Michael Kelly guitars. We're thinking about maybe buying the company. Bruh, come on back. Be a part of Michael Kelly. Be a part of Sam Ash again. Let us make this brand even better. Steve is the face of Michael Kelly. When I see Michael Kelly, I'm thinking of Steve Pisani. I gotta tell you, I feel pretty damn awesome about this guitar. 
I'm hoping, and this is the thing I actually said to Ben, I sent him multiple text messages saying, if this isn't any good, I'm gonna tell you. So far, it looks awesome, but we know looks can be deceiving. Feels pretty damn freaking good, but we gotta go plug her in. Let's go check it out. So if you look at these pickup rings, you have these little mini toggles. And the idea is, is that you can get each of these coils separately. So you can get a P90, a rails, or the humbucker in either series or parallel wiring, which as we'll learn is something that'll definitely change the tone. Let's just talk about what series versus parallel is so we can understand how it affects the tone and why that's super cool. With series wiring, the output of one pickup goes into the input of another pickup, while with standard parallel wiring, each pickup takes its own path to the output. Besides being noticeably louder, series wiring emphasizes low and mid-range tones, and this is a perfect combination to drive any tube amp into saturation without the help of a booster. Where series components all have equal currents running through them. Parallel components all have the same voltage drop across them. The main difference between series and parallel circuit is the amount of current that flows through each of the components in the circuit. With parallel, it's like you're walking next to somebody, hand in hand, and you're both experiencing the same thing. With series, you have to go through somebody. So with series pickups, you're literally wiring them through each other so that the output from the first pickup goes into the input for the second pickup. It's also interesting if you have an RWRP pickup, which this middle pickup is. The idea is when you have one of the pickups with RWRP, you'll get the same humbucking effect as you do when the pickups are wired in parallel. Most fenders are wired parallel, but for example, a Les Paul, the pickups are wired series together, so each coil within the humbucker is wired series, but if you go in that middle position, parallel. So if I have it facing this way, it turns off the P90 coil and I only have the Duncan Rails coil. If I turn it this way, I turn off the Duncan Rails coil and only have a P90. If I put it to the middle, that means I have series humbucking and we have parallel humbucking. So we're gonna start off by canceling out this P90 and just having the Rails coil. If you were curious, two volumes, one tone. Thank you. Michael Kelly and Steve Pisani. Now let's put it to just the P90. That sounds really good. This is now parallel switching for the lead humbucker and this should be slightly softer than the series. They say it's more transparent sounding so we'll hear. You can hear the pickups combined together with kind of the, the trebly sound that you get from just the rails pickup and then with the P90. So now this is series. Do you hear how much louder that is and thicker? Just to give you an idea, back to parallel versus series. Sounds pretty sick. Let's check out this rhythm pickup. Same deal. Now we're gonna go to the P90. I love P90, it's so, so full. Let's go to the rhythm pickup with parallel wire. That's really interesting because that sounds quieter than just the P90 by itself. That's in parallel. Now let's go just to the P90. Oh wow. So ironically the P90 is actually louder than the humbucker with parallel wiring. Now let's go to series wiring. This should be louder and thicker. So with the lead pickup going from the rails pickup to the P90 to parallel, then series is the difference in, in kind of volume. Whereas in this case, it seems that the P90 is actually louder than the humbucker in parallel. There's 24 different options you can have between changing from series to parallel to the P90s to the rail pickups. So here's in the middle, both humbuckers in series. Lead humbucker in parallel, rhythm humbucker in series. Both humbuckers in parallel. Now it's freaking awesome. So let's get to some freaking rock and roll, right? Now that's the lead pickup in series. 
Now let's go to parallel. <laughs> Just the rail. Yeah. Got a little carried away there, sorry. A P90 in a Les Paul style guitar. It's the bee's knees, guys. Sick. Back to rhythm with the rail pickup. All right, we're in parallel. series. Clearly a lot of the differences are super subtle, especially with distortion, but they're there, as you probably know with any guitarist, if you're searching for that sound, you don't have to take your pickups out and rewire them now, you, you got the triple shot from Seymour Duncan. <laughs> Sounds most excellent to me. Let's go to the lead. Everything about this guitar makes me happy. For an $899 guitar, you could not ask for a guitar to play better than this does. It came set up right from Sam Ash. My only beef with the company was when you go online, when it says who Michael Kelly is, I don't buy it. Since Steve Pisani took over Michael Kelly, seems like he's got things under control. As far as I'm concerned, Steve Pisani should change his name to Michael Kelly. And then as far as Ben Ash asking me to give this guitar away, the first free guitar I ever got sent to me, that's this awesome. Sam Ash is just gonna have to send me another one because you can take this absolutely incredible patriot out of my cold dead hands. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already? <laughs>